Zero K fans, this is Shadow 33 with a 2v2 this time. 2v2 exhibition match. We're gonna have a match between Kraken and Ivory King versus Yogg-Sothoth and Magman, and something of a preview to the tournament that's gonna be going on next weekend. Let's begin. It's gonna be on Red Comet, of course, because that's where it always is. Everyone seems to love Red Comet. Everyone else seems to love Red Comet. I think it's kind of flat, but okay. Anyway. Kraken going for Cloakabot Factory, while Ivor King going for Light Vehicles. Magman goes for Light Vehicles as well, while Yogg-Sothoth goes for the Air Start, so he's going for the Air Play. Kraken and Ivor King not going for Air Play at all. This is a typical thing in 2v2 to have one player go Air, but we did see in the last 2v2 tournament that it's not strictly necessary. It is quite possible to win without going for Air Factory, but it does require that you are clever about your anti-Air. Now, Yogg-Sothoth starting out with Avengers. He's worried about not keeping Air Control, which right now is not a concern whatsoever. Nog over Shadows quickly though, so it does give Magman and Yogg's sorry, Kraken and Ivory King a bit of time to build up their anti-air. Now, the players have met up, they know what all their factories are, and some small scouting going on. Ivory King going in the north, just probably gonna keep that dart there to make sure he knows when Yogg's and Magman expand in the north. Knows where Yogg's is, probably gonna be able to infer where Magman is. Both players are well aware of each other's position, or all players are each aware of each other's position and each other's factories. So right now, are they going to respond? A couple shadows coming for Yogg-Sothoth, and Scorch is coming in for Magman, while looks like Scorch is as well for Ivory King, so we're going to have a pretty micro-heavy fight between Ivory King and Magman, while Kraken, not focused on anti-air, going for Glaives. He is apparently pretty confident that he's going to be able to work entirely with just... He's going to work with Glaives, he's going to be able to attack from the south. Probably might attack to the south. I don't know. We'll see what the shadows do. Probably going to go for a comm snipe. Typically, that's what happens. Do have Riot e -cell com for Ivory King. Rocket Launcher e -cell com for Kraken. A Riot Auto Repair for Magman. And Yogg-Sothoth's Commander is just pure e -cell. So, a surprising amount of e -cell going around this map. Ivory King dealing a... Bit of, taking a bit of damage from a couple darts, but nothing too major. A couple Scorches coming in as well. And there's those Shadows. They are dealing a bit with some of the expansion of the North. Getting rid of this Mason, that's going to be a bit of a problem for that Mason. But it's not going to be the biggest deal. There are more Masons where that came from, but it does need to retreat. Actually, it is going to die. That Mason just barely dies. The Scorcher tries to save it from Ivory King, but it's not enough. And Ivory King continues to push forward... However, this harassment with these darts going around the back, and there is a Lotus here. That Lotus range just... The darts staying out of that Lotus's range, but this Lotus range... It, it's not necessarily going to be a problem. I don't think it can see through the Klugabot factory. We'll see, though. However, the Glaives don't really care. Just going in and killing, and Ivory King taking... Oh, crap. I'm missing that. Ivory King taking even more damage, and here come the Shadows. They are going to finish off Ivory King's commander, and down it goes! So Ivory King, the first commander loss of this game. However, he did have some power infrastructure beforehand. But still, at this point, Kraken and Ivory King are behind on power. In total, no, but Ivory King is individually behind on power. Magman, however, is fairly low on power himself. And Kraken coming in with a bunch of glaives. These glaives are going to be able to deal with the factory pretty... I think they're going to be able to finish up this air factory without any issue. We'll see, though. It depends on the micromanagement. That really comes down to micro. And he is weaving around the factory nicely, but not nicely enough... These glaives need to be running around. They need to be actually dealing with... There we go. That factory is down. The Scorch has gone down as well, but the glaives were just out of range of the factory, so they didn't end up dying. And the Avengers going to do what they can to finish that off. And Yogg-Sothoth's commander trying to get back in, but he has basically lost his production entirely. Ivory King and Kraken taken to the north. Try to finish this. The glaives are all down, but to the north, more glaives and Scorch is coming in to continue harassment. Ivory King and... Kraken, sorry, Kraken is Fred, by the way. Ivory King and Fred have been relentless. Forgot to point that last time I casted a game. Kraken is just one of Fred's names. Everyone everyone in this game has a ton of alternate names. They rename themselves all the time. So I have to keep track of that. But yeah. Ivory King and Fred, who were the team in the last two tournament, by the way, and they actually got in the third... Well, Ivory King alone got in the third place... Or fourth place. It was in the third place matchup, but Fred had to go. Anyway, very nice harassment, though. Really stopping Magman and... Yogg-Sothoth from building much of anything. Now, Yogg-Sothoth has still got his Shadows. He's still got... He has his Avengers still. Getting a rearm pad just to have something to make... Just to make them useful again, really. 
Magman building up levelers, trying to get rid of these... Trying to get rid of the glaives. He does have a leveler... The right cannon is the leveler weapon, so his commander has that as well. And pure scorcher glaive coming... Actually, no. Is that... No, that's pure scorcher glaive. That's what's coming from Ivory King and Fred. It's worked so far, and it looks like it's continuing to work. Though, these scorchers are starting to get killed too close to the enemy territory. Two scorchers have died for basically free... Okay, not quite free anymore, but still inside of Yogstas and Magman's territory. That is going to be a problem. Not the biggest problem, but still a problem. And light vehicles coming in from Yogstas, but it won't... It's not completing quite yet. Yogstas is not going to go down here, though. These Scorchers dealing with what they can, but it's not going to be enough. Yogstas getting this light vehicle factory. He's not going to have too hard of a time building that up. And from there, he's going to have... Well, that's his, that's his ground switch. But these shadows... I'm... Well, I don't see them actually doing much of anything. The Avengers trying to get rid of the... The Glaives to the south, and it looks like... No, we still have Scorcher Glaive coming in. That's... That is the entirety of what's coming in. And it looks like Kraken's Commander is taking a lot of damage. One more Shadow Shot would do it, but unfortunately, no more Shadows. So Yogg's can't easily get rid of Kraken's Commander. However, Kraken's Commander is still going to go down to Magman's Commander. One Riot Shot, so both... Well, Ivory King, and sorry, Ivory King and Fred have lo both lost their commanders. Magman is taking some damage, but his commander is not going down anytime soon. His commander is going to be able to get out of there, no problem. Now, at the same time, though, we do have... Well, we do have some Scorchers here to the north, but they aren't able to do too much. So, at this point, Fred and Ivory King don't have the commanders. Magman and Yogstoth don't have any real economy except for Reclaim. And just now, Yogstoth has gotten his Light Vehicle Factory up. So, at this point... They're, I'd say, really, Fred and Ivory King are quite ahead. They have got a nice setup. They haven't quite set up turrets yet. They haven't really decided this is where they're going to stay. This is where they're going to stand, and that's that's their territory. They're still pushing out. But they do have a really good position, other than the fact that they lost the commanders. Which isn't actually that big of a deal. More shadows coming in to just take care of individual targets, and additionally getting rid of more metal extractors... And it looks like that is going to be... Oh, that's going to be fairly problematic. That's the thing. Ivory King and Fred have to worry about these... These shadows. They are causing some issues. No real anti-air has been built yet. It looks like no anti-air is on... No, okay. Jethro's are coming in. Fred getting some Jethro's up just to get rid of those shadows once and for all. Fortunately, also getting a lot of damage from these Scorchers. And that Scorcher is going to get rid of one, possibly two Metal Extractors... And at the same time, though, Ivory King going to the north, making sure he can harass out what he can, keeping Magman from expanding at all, really. So Magman trying to just... Both players really focus on harassment at this point. Neither play, neither side's deciding that they can't easily push in. Neither side really has gone in... Actually, Ivory King and Fred have gone in for a main base assault a few times so far. Not so with Magman and yogg -Sadoth. They have not had a chance to go for any main base. They have kind of gone for front... Line can't really easily go for Prefrig on this map. You sort of can. The north and south aren't usually too heavy. The south especially is not too heavily watched, but... Well, southwest and northeast. But it's not something that they've been going for yet. And at this point, they really do need to take care of the periphery. And they are doing that. At this point, Yogg-Sath and Magman are actually starting to get quite a bit of damage in. Getting rid of quite a few metal extractors. Just along the front lines. Keeping... Well, keeping Ivory King and Kraken on is somewhat. However, at this point, that... Economy advantage is already going in their favor. In fact, Kraken's not even using all of it. He he is now using it. He's now pushing all of it into his factory. Has been for some time, but he's still floating, despite the fact that he is pushing all that metal out. His energy seems to be his bottleneck more than anything. But getting more wind generators will be able to get more energy, and at the same time, this is what I meant by periphery. Magman Yogstas forces coming in and able to just tear apart all of this pretty effectively. Just ripping apart all these metal extractors. They're all going to go down. Not only really much can be done there, but at the same time, we do have Glaze meeting up with the Scorchers, and the Scorchers are going to be... Actually, I think the Scorchers are going to be going down to this. Glaze need to be staying out of the range for the most part, but they are, and those Scorchers push back home. However, the Scorchers from the north that were attacking, getting pushed away by Ivory King. Leveler not able to intercept. So Leveler was not able to intercept. He needed to go around the other side of the hill to get rid of those Scorchers, which... Might pose a problem later on. And these these shadows coming in to deal some more damage. Looks like they are going to be able to do so. Getting Intercepting these... 
Wow, all of these Scorchers are going to die. Or the vast majority of them are going to die. All but one, the last one's going to go down to Magman's Riot Cannon. And that will end up being pretty, pretty sad. Kind of an 80 minutes defeat there, but it's worth trying. And it was worth harassing there. But yeah, those shadows, like I said, they're not being that... I don't think that merciful, really. They're a total thorn in the side of Kraken and Ivory King. He needs to, or they both need to get something up. The Jethros were up. They had to move out of position to avoid the levelers, but those shadows are not attacking where they are. They're attacking where the Scorchers are. They're attacking probably where the Glaives are, maybe. I don't think he's going to go for that. Oops. I don't think he's going to go for that. I think he might be going for probably things like levelers, maybe Scorchers. Like more useful targets like that. The levelers to the north would be very good targets, for example. And the Jethros are going to move into position, but these Scorchers are in place to deal with them. And the, the Glaives coming from the south from Fred, trying to do what they can, getting a few, well, getting a Metal Extractor or two, getting a Scorcher or two, but not able to do that much damage. Donating a ton of metal, by the way. Actually, Yogstoth and Magman, thanks to Reclaim, are actually running an economy advantage right now. Kraken and Ivory King are starting to fall behind. And like I said, the Jethro is getting revealed, able to damage and actually able to kill an Avenger completely. But even with that, they are not in a safe spot. And at this point, Yogg-Sothoth knows that the Jethros are there. He knows the Jethros are to the north. And he can probably assume that all the Jethros are to the north. He, he will assume that. And it looks like that's... We're very likely will assume that. And he's going to be correct in doing so. Warriors and Rocco's probably not going to do the best here. Warriors can try, but they're going to just go down way too quickly. These scorches, way too many Scorches in play. That is not going to work out. And these Rocco's cannot run away fast enough. They are completely dead. I think at this point, I don't know if... Does Fred even have anything that he can use for this? I don't think he does. There's too many Scorchers. The Levelers wouldn't be a bad idea. And an Air Switch for Ivory King. He does have Avengers. He's going to be able to get rid of these. But the Levelers have gone down to a mix of Scorcher and Shadow. Actually, no, this one Leveler here is still alive. And the Scorchers... So the Shadow... This one Shadow is the only thing that can deal with it. I don't think it's going to do so, though. But the last Shadow... Sorry, the last Scorcher coming in here gets rid of the Leveler before the main base can be destroyed. However, Magman and have stabilized. They have evened out, and it looks like the map is being pretty well split. We're getting into more of a reclaim-heavy phase of the game, though at this point, all the reclaim is inside Yogg-Sothoth and Magman's territory. Or if it's not, it has been reclaimed by them already. At this point, I... I'm curious to see what's going to... Okay, Levelers, I was expecting that. I was about to say, I'm curious to see how many Levelers that's going to be built there. Vamps and Avengers just to take air control. The Shadows are not yet threatened. Nothing has come in to actually threaten them. The Avengers have not come down to deal with them. And... We do have... A, okay, I... How many here? There was a tick that was that went off, but it didn't do much. It actually ended up stunning out the other tick. These Scorchers of the North are just ripping apart everything once again. The Yogg's the Magman trying, I think, possibly going for the kill from the north. We'll see how that goes. Avengers trying to take them out, but that's not going to help too much. And the Levelers, however, the Levelers are going to be the big deal. What the Leveler does, that's what I want to know. I don't know if it's going to do much useful, though. And the, another tick goes off, but the Leveler is not able to do much, unfortunately. A tick goes off, gets a couple of the Scorchers stunned. Center of the map, we do have a, another group of Scorchers, another half dozen Scorchers coming in here, ripping out part... Well, about to rip apart more and more, but the Stiletto finishes them off, or disarms all of them, allowing the Defenders to finish them off, and that being said, more Scorchers coming in to finish off the Defenders. The Disarmed Scorchers are taking shots, but they have backup. They have friends. And Slasher's coming down from Yogstuth. He switched over to a Heavy Slasher build, while it looks like a couple crashes are coming in from Magmen just to get rid of the Avengers that have been built so far to keep the Shadows safe. Now, at this point... Neither Yogg-Soth or Magman has air. yogg about to re-get air. Rebuild his air. But that's... I think the Avengers could have taken... They could have taken that out. I'm surprised that they hasn't bothered to take... All these shadows. All three shadows have been alive this entire game. To point that out. And at this point, Warrior... Warako combo is actually going to be able to get rid of the... They're going to be able to get rid of those Scorchers. There were few enough that it was probably... It was possible to get rid of them. Rocco's coming down from the north, though. And that... Against the line of Slashers. They had good positioning in the first place, but now the Slashers are nicely lined up. The Rockers are not flanking them out as they had been. And all of them are going down. Not one Rocko is going to survive this, and neither is this Warrior. 
not able to even kill anything in the process. And down goes that vamp. The vamp was trying to get rid of the shadow. It did not succeed. There are still three shadows in the field, and all three shadows are the ones that built that were built near the start of the game. They are still alive, still dealing a lot of damage. Levelers to the north for Ivory King to deal with as best he can what's going on here, but at the same time, Yogstoth Magman moving forward through the center from the south. However, it looks like they're going to have to deal with this. Ravager's coming in here. They will be able to get rid of the levelers without too much issue. They basically counter the levelers, and that's going to be... That's going to be basically it for the levelers for Ivory King. I think he's gonna, he might switch to Ravagers. Let's see. He is going straight for Scorchers. Not switching to Ravagers. Staying Scorcher, Dart, Leveler. And... The Stiletto, nice, nicely put in there. A little bit late, but the Scorcher can now deal with the Ravagers, no problem. However, that Stiletto going down to the Crashers. And... These Ravagers are disarmed, by the way, not EMP'd. And Shadows... Again, finishing off all these units running away, getting rid of the Mason, not getting rid of the Scorcher, mind you, but the Mason is still down. More Scorchers, like I said, being built by Ivory King. Zeus is being switched to by Fred. But Fred's going to be able to just get those Zeus's in. Could be useful against the Ravagers. It's a little bit tricky. He has to make sure that they are coming in with good numbers. And that's the thing. They don't have Splash, so you got to be careful with that. Vamps coming up from Yogstoth. Okay, he's got... He has air control once again. No ground-based anti-air for either of Fred or Ivory King. And... Okay, sorry. There's a bit. There's these... There's this. There's the three Jethros. Not great, but it's still something. And once again, the Stilettos are nicely being used to stop these attacks. Slashes here getting torn apart by darts. And that is not going to work out too... I mean... Actually, three seconds left in the disarm. These darts are probably going to go down pretty quickly, but the slashers now once again armed. Three slashes were left, but it looks like even with that, actually, that vamp is about to go down too. The Jethro's will it go down? It looks like one of the vamps does go down. The other vamp does escape, but one of them does get destroyed. And and of course, vamps being vamps, they have no respect for gravity whatsoever. So it's just going to fly off the map. Never to be seen again. And. Very nice stiletto shot there. That was an awesome stiletto shot, completely breaking the slasher line and giving Fred and Ivory King some room to breathe. And Magman's commander about to go down, goes down, taking all of this Scorchers with it, but still it's down. However, these slashers once again being armed. Where is that stiletto? I think that stiletto... No, it's still alive. Still alive, getting repaired, getting rearmed. There are, however, more slashers. There's double the slasher count that was actually stunned out there. But that stiletto is... That is the biggest ace in the hole that Kraken and Ivory King have. Good positioning on that. Actually, right now, if... Right here. He gets stunned along this line of the stiletto. He just goes through and pushes in here. He'd be able to get rid of it, but he's not doing so. I don't... Are they aware of this? Oh, whoops. No, well, barely. They are barely aware of what's going on. It looks like... Oops. Ah, whatever. Anyway, it looks like Ivory King and Kraken aren't quite aware of the exact positioning of these slashers. And if they were, I'm sure the stiletto would have come in here, would have stunned them all out. But at this point now, the stiletto can only stun about half of them. Still something, the hammer, there's a hammer coming in to try to help, but it's not going to help that much. And at the same time, we do have well, more levelers coming in. Is there, oh. Chili chat. Remember this? Anyway. It looks like we do have a Stiletto Strike coming in, but not in the right spot. Getting the Ravagers, but not the Slashers. The Slashers are the biggest threat. The Ravagers, however, are still support, but the Slashers are not stunned out. There is a Stinger behind it, and the Slashers are going to be able to take care of these Zeus's. The Ravagers coming in just to tank shots, just to get in the way, and the Slashers end up tearing apart all the Zeus's. All the Zeus's go down. There's nothing that can be done about that other than putting the Stiletto in the right spot with the Slashers. But unfortunately, Fred and Ivory King did not do that, and I think they're going to lose this game as a result. The Slash is moving in. Many Hammers are in the back to try to get rid of the Slashers, try to get rid of the Ravagers possibly as well, but definitely get rid of the Slashers. They're the targets that can actually be hit by the Hammers. At the same time, to the north, a bunch of Slashers from Magman coming in the north to deal with all the economy here. And some Levelers came in as well from Ivory King, but they have to retreat or die, and die is what they're going to go for. However, one of them is going to go around back. It's going to try to do what it can to harass. At the same time, though... Slasher and Ravager Assault getting rid of Kraken's base. 
Ivory King doing what he can, getting rid of the wind generators. It's not doing a hell of a lot, though. And that Zeus, stunning out what it can. It's not going to live long. It might be able to kill one thing, and that leveler has gone down, by the way. But the Zeus also going down. This factory is about to die. Fred's entire base has gone down. That is complete death. These hammers are just now finally starting to kill things. And even then, it's just too late. And bear in mind, these are all hammers. These are not direct fire units. They're artillery units, and they're getting range of the stinger as well, but they are... At this point, there's not much that can be done. I think, yeah, Ivory King and Fred are out. This factory is... The factory is dead. An attempt at a Scorcher attack completely fails. Stiletto... Trying to slow out these Scorchers, but really it's too little too late. The thing to Stiletto out would be this. This big attack there. Stiletto it out and at least use that to get through here, but he did not... And now, Fred and Ivory King need to resign, because there's not much that can be done here. That's pretty much game. And... GG. Surrender. Everyone explodes. And we move on to the next game. So stay tuned for that.